Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time once again for your weekly ramp up. And this week we're gonna talk about companies that are sending your data to Facebook. We're not talking about what Facebook is collecting about you, but rather the third parties that are sending information that they know about you into Facebook. It's pretty crazy. You can go in and look at it all, and I'm gonna show you how to do just that. So let's get to it. Now there are a couple of different ways that this information gets to Facebook. One of the most common ways is through the use of a cookie that Facebook calls off Facebook activity. And what happens in this instance is that uh, you are logged into Facebook and then you go to another website. Maybe you go to Amazon, for example. You start browsing around on some products and then when you go back to Facebook a little bit later, suddenly you see those products you were looking at as an advertisement on your Facebook feed and they do that through the use of a cookie. And you can see which websites are doing this to you by going to the link that you see on screen here. Let's take a look and see what people are doing to me. So this is the off Facebook activity screen that you'll get to when you click that link. They give you a little teaser as to what you're gonna find in there when you click forward. And there's some options here on the side that we'll talk about in a minute. But let's take a look first and see uh, what websites out there and apps are passing information along about me. And as you can see here, there are 333 apps and websites that I use that are passing this information back to Facebook. And of note here is that I use an ad blocker, which typically blocks a lot of this stuff, but apparently not everything because I'm logged into Facebook all the time. I rarely log out just because it's a pain to log back in again. And then when I go browse other websites that have these cookies installed, uh, you can see that uh, they're getting information back over to Facebook about me. And it's interesting too, because there's some websites in this mix that have been very critical of Facebook, like NBC News and the Wall Street Journal, who frequently cover some of these data privacy concerns, yet they are participating uh, in getting all of this information collected about individuals and shared with Facebook. And this list just goes on and on. Uh, now let's say I wanted to maybe disable the Boston Globe from tracking me through Facebook. I can click on the Boston Globe here, and it'll tell me that it's received six interactions of things that I've done with the Boston Globe. Uh, they're not telling you exactly what these interactions are, just that they've received six of them from that website and they might be able to do more uh, marketing to you because of that. Uh, now what I can do is I can turn off future activity from the Boston Globe, but it doesn't stop what they've already collected about me. And that's important to note here. Uh, so if I click this, It'll tell me that it's going to disconnect future activity. It might take 48 hours for that to become effective. Uh, if I'm logged in to the Boston Globe with my Facebook account, in other words, if I'm using Facebook to log into that site, I'm probably gonna lose that functionality because they're disconnecting me from uh, the Boston Globe through my Facebook account. Uh, they're still going to receive, though, activity from the Boston Globe, like my IP address and everything else, but they're promising here, and you got to take their word for it, uh, that they're not going to link that activity to me specifically any further, and you might still see ads from the Boston Globe when you enable that. So we're just going to click on that to turn that off, and now uh, we are good to go there, and then I can scroll through and see what else is out there. What's interesting is that some of these sites are using a lot of data points here. So for example, every once in a while in my feed, I'll see uh, these stories from we got this covered about Star Wars or Star Trek or something, and me being, you know, me, I click on those things, and you can see that there's been 33 interactions that it's recorded here. And of course, it's using that to send more my way. Uh, but again, these are all things not being generated from Facebook, but actually coming back in uh, through these other sites. And if you go into yours, I'm sure you'll see quite a bit about uh, yourself being logged this way from all of these sites as well. And I would love to hear how many uh, you are getting tracked by down in the comments below. Now, if we go back to the web address that we started at here, we'll be brought back to that screen we were at a few minutes ago. And on the side here, you've got the more options that you can expand to find some other things that we can do with this data. Uh, now, one thing I could do is clear history so that everything you just saw is wiped out and they can't use any of that rolling forward. But that doesn't mean they're not going to continue collecting this information in the future. So what this does is it basically hits the reset button, uh, but it'll start recollecting data as you begin accumulating more of it on all of these websites. So it's only partially useful there. 
uh, the one that you probably want to click on if you don't want to be tracked at all in the future is to click on manage future activity and what it tells you here is that uh, you will maybe not see as many personalized ads in the future if you do enable this and if I click through here and I uncheck this box uh, this will disable any off-site activity from being reported back to Facebook, at least insofar as these cookies are concerned, uh, or I could do it on a site-by-site -site basis. So you do have the ability to turn this off, but you really got to dig deep to find all of this stuff, and hopefully that uh, starting address link there will be helpful. Uh, one thing that we're not going to cover in this video, but maybe we'll do in a future one, is that Facebook does give you the ability to download all of your information. Uh, so you can actually take everything that you've ever done in Facebook, including all the things that they're tracking about you, and download it and take a look at it later, including some of the topics that they think you might be interested in. And it's pretty scary, actually, when you look at how much data they can collect about you just based on the things you look at and click on. And again, there's no way to really know how they know this, which is the creepiest part of all. Now, if you're curious about how all of this works, there is a post on the Facebook engineering page here that details all the steps that they took to uh, get this data detached because apparently this system was very much intertwined with Facebook's architecture and it wasn't easy to do, which gives you an idea as to just how important personal data is to Facebook's business model. So check it out uh, from an engineering standpoint if you're curious in that sort of thing. Now the other thing that happens on Facebook are something called business lists and this is where uh, companies can upload lists of people uh, to Facebook and then Facebook matches those lists to people that they have on their platform and they use a whole bunch of different ways to do that matching including your name, your date of birth, your address, your zip code, uh, your phone's identifier if they have that information. There's a lot that they can match here and this is something that you can also see on Facebook if you go to this address here. And when you visit that link, you will be taken to this page, which is the page that Facebook has where they show you everything they've got on you. And what you want to do is kind of scroll down towards the bottom where it says information about you. And this is where you'll find ads and businesses. And if we click on that and we go over to advertisers who uploaded a contact list with your information, uh, what we will see is what you see here. You'll get the ability to look at who uploaded and used the list with your information on it. And then you'll have a whole bunch of companies here that have been, at least in my case, uploading my data to Facebook to match for advertising and all sorts of other stuff. And I haven't done business with all of these companies. In fact, I've never bought anything from the DC Universe, for example. And then you'll see some other ones here like the Oracle Data Cloud. Uh, this is not advertising from Oracle, but rather they are acting as a data broker and selling this information to others for them to use for advertising. So if, if I click on view controls here, uh, you can see that Cracker Barrel Cheese, Allegra Over the Counter, and 13 others are using the data clouds list to show ads to me. And if we click on this, you can get a list of all of the companies that were buying data uh, from Oracle to target me directly. And we'll talk about where they get that data in a second. What's interesting too is you can see if people are uploading lists to exclude you from seeing their advertising. Uh, so there are a lot of reasons for that. Perhaps people want to exclude their existing customer base, for example, or maybe they know that uh, I am not in the market for an Audi right now and they don't want to waste their money advertising to me. So you can use a list to target people for an ad or use a list to target people so they don't see an ad. Uh, and then you can go in individually and decide uh, which of these companies should not be getting my information or using it for those purposes. Uh, even something like CBS here is using uh, multiple different accounts and pages to advertise to me. So I'm seeing ads for CBS All Access and The Late Show with Colbert. Interestingly, they are excluding me from seeing ads about Star Trek. Maybe they know that I'm a fan of Star Trek already and they don't want to waste money advertising uh, stuff to me when they know they've already got me. Who knows? But I thought that was interesting that I'm being excluded from seeing ads about Star Trek. And then you can just keep going deeper and deeper into this and seeing uh, who else is using uh, your information and how. Now you can turn these off on an individualized basis 
but I don't see a command to turn it off for every uploaded list. So this is something where you're definitely going to want to keep an eye on what they're doing with you. And as I mentioned, this is not, again, coming from Facebook, and in many cases not coming from these businesses directly, but they're buying lists and then re-uploading them. And there's a great analysis here in the Denver Post that's worth looking at, because a lot of this data uh, doesn't come from some of these new high-tech companies, but rather it's coming from your credit card companies who have a lot of information about the things that you're buying and your consumer habits. Uh, when you buy a car, for example, that information is getting sold as well. And all of this goes into these data brokers. They sell it out into different markets for direct mail, for example, which has been around forever. Uh, but they're also now putting that data onto Facebook and then selling it to people who are advertising on Facebook. Uh, so really, the only way to stay completely anonymous is to use Bitcoin or uh, just regular old cash, because every time you do any kind of transaction that's electronically recorded, the data of that transaction is incredibly valuable, and it will be sold. And that is how these advertisers can so effectively find you on Facebook and on other platforms. And today, of course, we're picking on Facebook, but they're not the only ones doing this. Google, YouTube, which you're watching right now, everybody does this. They've been doing it forever, uh, but now we're starting to get a better window into what they're doing and how. Uh, because of some of the new regulations that have come down in California uh, and also, of course, in Europe with the GDPR. So hopefully this was an interesting discussion for you, and I would love to hear uh, how long of a list you had when you jumped into your profile to see what information was there about you. Uh, so let me know down in the comments below or on our Facebook group and we can discuss further because I'm really curious to get some comparatives here to see if uh, others have more or less than what I had because I try to be very careful about this stuff, but apparently not enough. So let me know down in the comment section. Now this week's wrap up is being brought to you by all of you. We had a lot of super chatters this week on some of my live streams. They included Clean937 Samuel, Matt Green, Carol Chermazinski, Handheld Obsession, Recipe Bob, Handquake, and Zam. And we also had a new supporter this week on Patreon, Kazi S. I want to thank everyone for their contributions this week and everyone who's been contributing on an ongoing basis. I also want to thank all of you who watch on a regular basis too because all of those things equal channel growth. And if you want to support the channel, you can. You can go to lon.tv support and make a monthly or a one-time contribution to the channel. And of course, we support the YouTube membership program, uh, which is something you can do right down below and you'll get a little badge next to your name whenever you comment or chat. So let's take a look now at the week in review. As you know, I've been live streaming some of my day-to-day -day work here on the channel and we had some fun ones this week. Uh, one was a bunch of stuff that we did for my tech to-do list, just kind of jumping through a few things that I was checking out for upcoming videos. And then we also did a look at the blister board for the Mister, which is a USB hub board that also allows you to connect retro game controllers. We're going to have more on that in a more condensed video soon. On the Extras channel, we had a couple of mini reviews along with an unboxing of the HP Chromebook we just looked at the other day. A lot of USB docs this week on the Extras channel that you can check out. On the main channel, of course, we had that review of the Chromebook 14. Uh, we also demoed the new HD Home Run Quattro 4K. This is their new ATSC 3.0 tuner. We'll probably come back and talk about ATSC 3.0 in an upcoming wrap-up video to talk more about this new broadcast technology. A lot of you are excited about that, and Nick Kelsey from Silicon Dust walked us through all of that. That was a sponsored video. And then we also had a comparative of a Thunderbolt SSD to a USB Type-C SSD, uh, both from the same company called Sabrent, and that was kind of a fun exercise. And you can check out all of these videos in the master playlist down below. So this week on the channel, I've got a bunch of things planned. We're going to be doing our sponsored Plex video that we do every month. Uh, this month, we're going to take a look at live TV. Uh, they've made some changes to it since we last looked at it a couple of years ago. Uh, so we're going to revisit that primarily because this is a free feature now. You don't need a Plex Pass now to watch live TV. Uh, you still need the Plex Pass for DVR, but you can at least watch live TV now uh, with your Plex account, provided you have a tuner. We'll talk more about that. Uh, we're also going to take a look at a couple of phones from TCL. They've got a low-end one and a, a slightly higher-end one. We're going to start with the low-end one, of course. Uh, that will come up a little later this week, and then maybe the following week we'll check out their Pro Phone to see how it differs. 
I also hope to get to my review of the blister board for the Mister. And if you're not familiar with Mister, I definitely suggest you check out my Mister playlist at lan.tv slash Mister because it is a great thing to tinker with. Uh, it's an FPGA-based computer that can very accurately replicate uh, most of the 80s and 90s gaming and computing technology. And it's a lot of fun if you're into retro stuff as I am. And I'm still going to hopefully soon get to my video about vMix and why I love it so much. And the uh, computer that we built with all the parts that you see there, there on screen has been working flawlessly since it got going here. I'm actually having a hard time uh, straining it. The most that I have been able to uh, hit on the percentage meter of resource utilization is 20% and it's really just doing great. So we're going to talk more about vMix and how I now make videos with it uh, in an upcoming video. And then I know a lot of you have been asking about this Flowbee thing and I wanted to talk about why I haven't cut my hair with it yet. So what happened here in Connecticut was that uh, last week, it was looking as though all of the barber shops would be allowed to open in a limited fashion here uh, on May 20th. So I was trying to line up my Flowbee experience with when I might be able to go to the barber shop to fix whatever I <laughs> mess up with the Flowbee. And I was all set to do it. And then about two days before they were going to let the barber shop open, they changed their mind and they uh, pushed it back to June 1st. So I think I might get to it this week. Let's see if we can get a bunch of content ready to go for the channel and then we'll uh, give it a go. My wife has agreed to help with this project and my kids have agreed to watch me and laugh at me as it goes down. So we'll definitely live stream it. And uh, yeah, it needs to happen because the hair is uh, just out of control at this point. So uh, stay tuned. I will say though, I'm very happy to have hair at 43. So that's, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, if you want to uh, follow me and maybe get notified when I take that Flowbee out and put it into my head, uh, you can click on the bell here to be notified whenever we do anything here on the channel. We have other channels you can find me on, including my podcast, which has audio versions of this show. And if you want to find me on Amazon, you can go to lon.tv slash Amazon shop because we go live on Amazon all the time now too, and you can get notified when we do that. Uh, if you want to engage with the channel, you can join the email list. Uh, you can join the Facebook group, which we are not selling your information to anyone about, but I'm sure Facebook is probably doing something with that. I'm having a problem this week with the Facebook group. It's not letting me approve everybody that's signing into it. So if you did join recently and you didn't get in, uh, just hang on because once whatever bug is causing this to happen goes away, we should be able to get you into the group. We're almost to a thousand members. It's been a great experience for the channel. Lots of great discussion and ideas for this show come from that Facebook group. So definitely head over there if you're okay knowing what Facebook knows about you. And then of course we have the store where I sell previously used items that we reviewed here on the channel, which you can find uh, at lon.tv slash store. And then we have an email alert that you can sign up for, which I uh, send out regularly. So whenever we change anything in the store or add something, we send out an email to let you know that those changes have happened. And that is going to do it for this week's weekly wrap up. Please have a safe and healthy Memorial Day. Uh, take some time to think about the day and the sacrifices made to allow us to have uh, the freedoms that we have even under the current pandemic situation. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Again, stay healthy, keep washing those hands, and hopefully this pandemic will be behind us soon and we can all get back to normal. But until then, I'll be right here at this desk live streaming all the time so you can watch me tinker around with tech stuff and you can talk to me too. So lots of fun. Uh, thanks everyone for everything. I appreciate your viewership and your support. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, The Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.